So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the three most common mistakes that I see with an exercise called the face pull. So the first common mistake that I'll see when doing this exercise is letting that elbow drift too far behind the body. And what I mean by that is when doing this exercise and letting the elbow come behind the level of the trunk and then coming into this exercise or into the face pull, what happens is by that elbow coming behind the shoulder, what it does is inversely, it's gonna push that shoulder forward. And when it does that, that's gonna cause a lot of increased stress here on the front of the shoulder when the emphasis in the idea of this exercise is actually to increase the control of the back and put that arm in a more central position. The second most common thing that I'll see with this exercise is not getting not going to the full range of this exercise. Now, the end of the exercise is gonna come into where the forearm should be in a vertical position. So we'll commonly see where that range is limited and we're only coming here at an angle. Now this can occur for one of two reasons. One, we don't have the mobility to allow us to get into this range, or two, we're using too much resistance that we're unable to effectively control the movement to get into that position. So if it's the latter, we wanna make sure that we bring the resistance down to focus on the exercise for its intended use. So the first thing I would do is check to see, can you come into this position? We're at a 90, 90, 90. The second thing we wanna look at is, is the resistance, resistance of the band too much? For this, I'm actually using the, the smallest amounts of number zero with serious steel. And I'll put, a, I'll put a link in the description below. So when doing so, we wanna make sure that when we pull, we're actually pulling to having a vertical forearm position. <clears throat> and we don't wanna be limited here, okay? Cause then we're not, we're missing out on that emphasis from here to here. We're missing out a good chunk of that external rotation and the benefits of this exercise in targeting that infraspinatus. Now, the third and final mistake that I'll commonly see with this exercise is actually the level of the pull. Now, traditionally, or for most people, I would say this exercise is best at eye level. Okay, so when pulling, we want it to be at eye level that we're actually pulling and trying to get the band just over the level of the eyes into a vertical fashion. Now, when can we change this or when would I go outside of this fashion, go outside of this normal range? Well, if I have an athlete who's having trouble getting into the upward rotation of the scapula, then I'll actually bring the band level down. Reason being, when I come up, I'm actually targeting and driving those elbows into the band to allow and get more of that emphasis of pushing up and going into that upward rotation. Okay, now this is gonna be commonly seen with power lifters or a lot of gym goers who don't do enough and getting enough of that upward rotation, enough pressing overhead. So the way that'll look like is we're gonna bring this down and we just bring it down a little bit to the point where the exercise still stays the same. We still wanna target getting that level of the eyes. And when we come up, we wanna focus on driving, not coming into external rotation as much. We still are, but we actually wanna focus on driving those elbows forward into it. And that's just gonna help just a little bit getting more of that upward rotation of the shoulder blades and keeping those flush up against those ribs. Now, on the contrary, if you're a barbell athlete, specifically a weightlifter or a crossfitter who's doing a lot of cleans, snatches, jerks, et cetera, where we're putting a lot of stuff overhead, we find these athletes are much stronger in their upper traps and getting a lot of that upward rotation where they lack is actually the pulling component. They don't have enough of that pulling aspect. So what I'll do for them is actually bring the level of the band up higher and actually have them focus on coming down. Or what I'll even do is have them get into a slight squat position and actually have more of the emphasis coming down. Um, that way it's gonna engage more of the lower traps to bring those shoulder blades um, downward as well as targeting the serratus anterior as well as the infraspinatus. But the concepts of either one, if you're trying to 
facilitate upward or downward rotation with that exercise, we still wanna maintain that vertical forearm position to get that full benefit of the external rotation with use of the infraspinatus. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friends, drop a comment below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.